With the recent reports of locally acquired chikungunya cases on the island of St. Martin in the Caribbean, many Americans must be wondering, what is this odd name disease that's in our backyard, and will it affect the United States? Joining me on the phone now is Roger Nashi, Ph.D. Dr. Nashi is the chief of the Arboviral Diseases Branch in the Division of Vector-Borne Diseases at the CDC. Good morning, Dr. Nashi, and thanks for talking to me today. Good morning. Thanks you. Thank you for having me on. Great. Um, until just very recently, chikungunya was found only in about 49 countries, mostly in Asia, Africa, and India. Um, now it's in the Western Hemisphere, right on our doorstep. And I think it would be safe to say that most Americans have no idea what chikungunya is or even how to pronounce it. I know I struggle with it. Dr. Nashi, can you tell my website and radio show audience what is chikungunya, how is it transmitted, symptoms, treatment, etc.? I'd be glad to. Chikungunya, and you're saying it correctly, is a virus transmitted by mosquitoes. Um, it was uh, discovered in the late 1950s in East Africa and was, uh, was really not much of a problem uh, globally until about 2004 when it uh, started causing outbreaks in the uh, Indian Ocean, starting in uh, Lumu, Lumu Island, Reunion, Comoros Islands, off the coast of Kenya, and then eventually was, uh, traveled around the globe to Southeast Asia, India, um, into, uh, and then caused some, uh, some local outbreaks in, uh, in uh, Italy and southern France in 2007-2010. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a virus that uh, certain mosquitoes pick up from infected people. The mosquitoes get infected, and then when they subsequently feed on another person, they can transmit the virus. And it, it, um, it, uh, it appears that it's moving around the globe in these infected people and in the U.S., coincident with the outbreak that occurred in India in 2006 through about 2009, um, we saw an increase in the number of infected travelers returning to the U.S., which, was, uh, which occurred worldwide. Um, that epidemic ca uh, caused about 1.5 million cases in India. Um, now, the, the, uh, the risk that we're seeing that we're concerned about now is – uh, prior to this incident in uh, St. Martin, we've never seen anything other than travel-related cases in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, people returning from places where chikungunya transmission is going on, uh, coming back, getting sick, and then um, getting a blood test and detecting the, the infection that way. This is the first time we've seen local transmission. That means that local mosquitoes are, are becoming infected and uh, transmitting the, people to, the virus to people that have never left the island. Um, so that established transmission uh, is, a, is a concern because we do have the mosquitoes in the Western Hemisphere, the species that are competent vectors, and since the virus has never been here before like this, uh, the, the entire human population is, is susceptible. Right. And um, I, in 2011, I think it was published, you were involved in writing uh, the manual Preparedness and Response for Chikungunya Virus Introduction in the Americas. Uh, that was a CDC PAHO publication. Am I correct about that? That's correct. We uh, in 2006 and 2007, when we started seeing an increase in the number of travelers infected with chikungunya virus, we partnered with the Pan American Health Organization and a number of uh, countries in the region um, to develop these guidelines for surveillance and response for chikungunya virus to assure that. The, uh, the, the health departments throughout the region were familiar with chikungunya virus and the risk that it posed. And this is particularly important in uh, areas of, the, uh, of um, the Western Hemisphere where another virus called dengue virus is endemic and uh, causes annual outbreaks. Um, the same mosquito, the same circumstances that uh, promote dengue transmission will support chikungunya transmission. So places where, where dengue causes epidemics are at uh, at pretty substantial risk for epidemics of chikungunya as well. Right, and, and in the um, in the publication, um, at one part I think it's in the preface. It says, although indigenous transmission of chikungunya does not occur in the Americas now, the risk for its introduction into the local vector mosquito population is likely higher than had been previously thought um, because of one of the mosquitoes listed as Aedes aegypti. Um, so clearly, this local transmission in St. Martin is not a surprise to you or your colleagues. 
No, we had been anticipating the local transmission establishment uh, since 2006, 2007, when we saw the, the global uh, epidemic uh, continuing to spread and saw an increase in the number of travelers bringing the virus uh, to, to new areas. Um, so we had been working with, uh, with health departments around the region to develop diagnostic tests, to provide guidance for, um, uh, for the surveillance programs, case management, and uh, the differential diagnosis um, for, in, for determining if a case is dengue or chikungunya virus. Right. And also it's noted in the, in the publication that because of the broad distribution of um, the mosquito and the lack of exposure in the human population in America, um, it is written that large outbreaks could really um, cripple public health infrastructure. Can you elaborate on that? Yes. Uh, the the um, the the uh, attack rates. The the in, when an when an outbreak of chikungunya starts in a in an area that has never experienced it before, and has the right circumstances, the right mosquito population, the right, right mosquito species in the susceptible human population. Um, the attack rate, the, the percentage of the people in the population in some of these outbreaks that are infected has been as high as almost 70%. Um, and a, a substantial proportion of those, uh, a very high percentage, will show symptomatic disease, will get sick. Um, and the, the number of people that are reporting to hospitals and clinics can be quite large and, and uh, overwhelm the capacity of, a, of a, uh, um, a local hospital, a local clinic, if they're not prepared for that, that situation. Sure. And, and, this, and chikungunya is rarely fatal, am I right? That's, that's true. Um, the, they're, as with any disease, uh, if someone is, is, uh, already has a compromised health condition, if they're already sick, um, any other disease will will increase the likelihood that they, that uh, that mortal that there'll there'll be higher mortality in those populations, but in general, chikungunya is not a fatal disease. It's more of a debilitating disease. Uh, it starts with an acute fever, and a high percentage of the population that's infected shows symptoms and uh, and and expresses a, a, a fairly serious joint pain and arthralgia that can be quite debilitating. And that's, uh, that's actually where the name comes from. It's a, a word um, that, uh, that refers to the stooped posture, the bent over posture uh, of the people then, uh, that uh, are infected with chikungunya and showing those symptoms. It uh, comes from a, 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 the Makandi tribe language in um, uh, Tanzania and Mozambique. Right. And let me get a little closer to home. Um, this year, as you're, I'm sure you're quite aware, there's been dozens of cases of locally acquired dengue. We see it in Florida, we see it in Texas, even Long Island. Um, any, if you can look into your crystal ball, any thoughts about when we might see the same with chikungunya here in the U.S. and how concerned should Americans be about this? Well, I think that the the um, the the crystal ball is kind of foggy at the moment, but uh, we, we do know that by that by um, uh, by increasing the the presence of chikungunya in areas where there's a lot of travelers, um, the likelihood of the virus coming back into the United States from infected travelers increases. Now, so far, the outbreak appears to be limited to um, to to St. Martin. So the the number of travelers, the extent of of the uh, of exposure is relatively small. Now, should the virus not be contained in St. Martin and spread to other areas in the Caribbean or in the, the tropical Americas, um, the exposure to human travelers will go up. The likelihood of infected travelers landing uh, in an area where there are susceptible vectors and they get bitten, the vectors live long enough to, um, to replicate the virus and then bite another person, uh, that increases. So I can't put numbers on those things, but the fact that we have seen we have seen similar situations occur with dengue means that it's it, there is a, a tangible possibility. But one thing to keep in mind is that uh, dengue virus is extremely widespread throughout the, throughout the region. Um, there are a large number of dengue infected travelers coming back into the United States. And despite that, uh, and having the competent vectors in a number of places, we see relatively few uh, of these outbreaks and the, and they appear to be relatively limited. So uh, while I, I think that there's a good likelihood that such events will occur, the extent may be uh, a much, restrict, much more restricted than it would be in the tropical areas where uh, dengue virus is endemic and causing epidemics on an annual basis. Sure. And also for um, 
my listeners that are in the United States, um, there's not a preventive vaccine for chikungunya. So essentially prevention is your typical mosquito um, prevention of getting bit, you know, using sprays with DEET, et cetera. Am I correct about that? That's correct. There is no vaccine, and when someone does become sick, there is no specific antiviral treatment. It's uh, symptomatic treatment that's, uh, that's right. to, to manage the pain. Uh, the prevention is, uh, is, is, is really pretty simple. It's preventing yourself from being bitten by mosquitoes. Uh, so the personal repellents that you mentioned are effective. There are quite a number of good personal repellents on the market that have uh, EPA uh, evaluated um, active ingredients and are safe and very effective. Um, then you can also take uh, avoidance measures to uh, uh, when there is evidence of chikungunya or other mosquito transmitted diseases in the area, uh, avoiding mosquito biting by staying indoors during the period of time when they're biting or uh, using long sleeves when you're out, things like that. Um, and then there are also in many communities, uh, community-based mosquito control programs that can help reduce the uh, the abundance of the the biting mosquitoes through uh, a variety of control measures, uh, source reduction, eliminating the sources of the mosquitoes, um, or, um, or or using larvicides or adulticides where necessary to reduce the abundance of the biting mosquitoes. Okay, fantastic. Well, I've been talking to Dr. Roger Nashi with the CDC. Dr. Nashi, I appreciate your time and expertise. Thanks a lot. A pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Okay, great. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.